Hi, my name is Ton. I'm Tony, 21 pharmacist candidate. Today, my presentation is about sulfonylurea. Sulfonylurea is a group of drugs used to treat type 2 diabetes. It has been used widely because it's cheap and effective in lowering blood sugar. Sulfonylurea can work well at first, but slow their effectiveness over time because it directly stimulates the beta cell to release the insulin, which can make the beta cell to burn out in the long term. Also, it can cause a weight gain and, and the risk of hypoglycemia. Therefore, patients should be educated on hypoglycemia management, especially during the exercise, sickness, or low food intake. And lastly, it has to be taken with food. They are first and second generation of sulfonylurea. The first generation include clopropramide, tolazomide, terbutamide, and second generation include glimepiride, lipizide, and riboride. The second generation have largely replaced the first generation because they are more potent and can be given in the lower dose. The mechanism of action of sulfonylurea, as I mentioned earlier, is directly stimulate the beta cell to release the insulin. In order to do this, it's by to sulfonylurea receptor on potassium ATP channel, which regulate the release of insulin from the beta cell. This binding inhibits the potassium ATP channel leading to the calcium influx and stimulation of insulin secretion. For the indication, sulfonylurea are usually used as the add-on therapy with metformin when the patient has a severe hyperglycemia that has fasting blood glucose over 250, random blood glucose over 300, and A1C is more than 9.5%. So for new ura, it's pretty effective because it can lower the, lower the A1C by 1 to 2%. Some common side effects are weight gain, hypoglycemia such as shaking, sweating, confusion, and dizziness. The hypoglycemia is less common with glipizide, which is shorter acting than glyburide, which is the longer acting so for new urea. Also, it can cause nausea, skin reaction such as pruritus, rash, and photosensitivity. Mm. Now we go into its medication. The first one is Glipizide, brand name is Glocotrol. The starting dose is 2.5 mg every day, 30 minutes before meal. Dose higher than 50 mg a day should be divided, and maximum is 20 mg twice a day. The Glipizide ER standard release brand name Glucotrol XL. The starting dose 2.5 to 5 mg a day with breakfast or the first main meal of the day and maximum is 20 mg a day. Glipizide is a drug of choice in the renal failure because of its inactive metabolite. So there's no dose adjustment in patients with chronic kidney disease. Glimepiride brand name yeah, Amiril dose 1 to 2 mg every day with breakfast or the first main meal and maximum 8 mg a day. The advantage of the mepiride is that it's more rapid onset with longer duration and lower incidence of hypoglycemia. It's metabolized 100% by the liver. It's safe in the renal failure, but those must be reduced in patients with low EGFR. When the EGFR is less than 15, alternative therapy should be considered. Glyburize macronized brand name is Diabeta, starting dose 2.5 to 5 mg a day with meal and maximum dose is 20 mg a day. Glyburize macronized brand name is Glanase, starting dose 1.5 to 3 mg a day with meal and maximum is 12 mg a day. The difference between the Glanase and Diabeta is that Glanase is absorbed better in the body, so it comes with lower dose compared to Diabeta. Glyburide should not be used in patients with renal or liver failure. It also is the longest acting sulfonylurea, so it can lead to more and prolonged hypoglycemia. Therefore, it's not recommended in patients over 65 years old. For monitoring, A1C may be measured every three to six months. Patients may be concerned about the situation that can cause hypoglycemia, such as after exercise, miss meal. Uh, the use of high dose or longer acting drug. And this concludes my presentation today. Thank you for listening.